Those are great moments where you're really tired of any type of experience. Those faces, if you have them. And sometimes they can occur when you're suffering, no matter where you look or what you do. Then it's more pronounced. So it's like, well, if I can't fix this, if I can't change my state right now, then I'm, I'm really tired of all kinds of experience. I'm tired of experience itself, like any experience. So therefore, experience itself. And then something again can open up because you're playing with that threshold where just like you can ignore an aspect of your experience, you can also ignore, doesn't mean it's not registered on some level, but you can ignore what is registered, meaning not indulge anything and stay really stationary, for lack of a better word, really undistracted, unfold. And then it's kind of like you're stepping into a stable nothingness. But again, if you sort of stay with that, stay with that, it's like a new dimension that is different can begin to sort of knock on your back door, and open up the sense of indescribable, vast reality, yet not an experience. And there's kind of three sort of nothingnesses, um, unless you want to call the absolute nothingness, which I typically don't. But there's just the concept of nothingness, the thought of nothingness, just the idea of a blankness, which can lead into sort of a blankness state, still within the mind. But it's, it's basically just a concept in the mind. It's a thought form. Then there's the causal body nothingness, which can also be interpreted as a nothingness because there's no beyond the subtle body, beyond the mind, beyond the senses, beyond the energies, the pranas and all that, there is unfamiliar territory because it doesn't have a form in that sense. It doesn't have a, it's, it doesn't have an object. There's no objects as we know it, except for the causal body itself, which we're not familiar with being conscious of. So when we're sort of at the threshold of mind to no mind or mind or subtle body, mental body to causal body, that is typically experienced as a nothingness as well, as just sort of an, a state of ignorance or darkness. Not negative darkness, but just the absence of objects, the absence of highlights. And so, and then there's a sort of a nothingness that is right, sort of when you're playing with the threshold of, of pure being or pure consciousness or pure awareness, I'm using these synonymously right now, or God. When you're kind of at that threshold and you're starting to look and inquire beyond all experiencing, then when you're turning your back on awareness, all forms of consciousness, even the sense of being, then it is again like initially, because it's unfamiliar territory, so initially it's like this, this nothingness. But it has a bit of a, a weird sort of magnetic pull to it, or pressure, depending how you interpret it. And, but it's kind of like a nothingness, it's kind of like the aura in between awareness and absolute reality. It's kind of like the, the gateway, if you will, or the sort of in-between phase where like kind of like a twilight almost. So initially, typically what we intuit and sense when we begin to gaze in a clear moment, in a lucid moment, when we gaze beyond or inquire beyond consciousness, in, initially, typically before there is sort of a potential full-blown realization of absolute reality, be, being absolute reality, becoming absolute reality, there's this sense, this filter of a sort of nothingness also. So there's the concept, there's the causal body, which can be interpreted as nothingness. And then there is right at the threshold between awareness and the absolute reality. Before reality is really realized, before the lights, in a sense, go on. There's no lights, but <laughs> before awareness really is absorbed into absolute infinity, there is this sort of yet another nothingness threshold, at least in my experience, I have found. That's why I'm always a little skeptical when people call the absolute nothingness. Maybe they've had sort of a glimpse or they've played at that threshold, but it can be causal body. In the most uneducated cases or not self-aware cases, it can even be just the concept of a blank state of mind. Like the concept of nothingness, you know, when you meditate on that, well, well, well. eventually it will take you into the causal body if there's enough concentration on the concept. But initially it's just like 
oh yeah, I'm not having any thoughts or a blank, nothing state of mind. Um, and if people are sort of advanced, then they can come to the conclusion that they've transcended awareness and that they've really glimpsed the other side, but then typically they call it nothingness. Again, like when you sort of go through that threshold, like go through it, it is a little bit like going through a portal or a black hole where you really exit all your senses and all your conventional ways of experiencing while you're, you're exiting all of experiencing. But then it is, I mean, it's difficult to metaphysically be accurate in describing this, but how you could picture it is as if you're, you are the shuttle, your consciousness is the shuttle and it's sort of taking that black hole and it migrates to the other side, if you will. It migrates, it really transcends the whole sphere of consciousness, but it maintains itself. It doesn't go unconscious. It doesn't turn to nothing. It's, it is like nothing because it's not a thing, but it is the infinite reality. It's like absolute. You realize like, ooh, this is absolute. There's, you feel, you know, I, I don't know. It's so hard to describe, right? But Because we're using senses and, and concepts that we're used to. But that's what I call, again, the exclusive realization of the absolute world exclusive meaning at the exclusion of everything else and therefore it is only the reality but it's it is experiencing itself it's kind of like the pure mirror of awareness instead of being turned towards uh the whole realm of form and consciousness and creation it turns the other way and it now illuminates the absolute to itself you could say it in that way although the absolute itself is free of that mirror of that awareness so it's like the lights go off on everything and they go on on something else that you've never known before. You have, but to the, to the memory of you, it's a totally new, like unspeakable dimension of being, for lack of a better word. It's being non-being, like being beyond being. A different realm. I mean, yeah, in a sense, you know, and that kind of brings up the, the image of oh dimensions and stuff it's not quite like that but it is a valid way to describe it in one w way because it's just a different realm of like there's no totally different. way to concept it's totally different yeah it's no way to conceptualize it right i wasn't thinking of dimensions or anything yeah. like that at all it's just like complete unknown yeah n new realm yeah yeah it still trumps everything so far that i've ever tapped into but it is so different that it's uh, it's just almost confusing to think about it or talk about it. You know? mm. I mean, it's not confusing to me, but it can it just generates. It's confusing to try to talk about it because you have to kind of any pointer you give, you have to almost immediately negate it. So it's a little. Um, we should do that with every topic. Oh, nice. Right? Yeah. <laughs> as soon as you say something, <laughs> like, you have yeah. to negate it and Booyah. start again. <laughs> Get some accuracy going. Yeah, penetrated the absolute booyah. <laughs> huh? It's superior to all the all the teachings about emptiness and all that. It's non negotiable once you've had an exclusive realization of it. You cannot deconstruct your way there. I don't think. But you can have a relationship to it. You can have a sense of it. And the more you sense into it, the more bent with you open up. It's like upgrading your internet cables from uh, regular to optic fiber. But there's no creation there. And it takes sort of a gradual, um, well, gradual too, although that's not what I meant to say, <laughs> a relative level spiritual growth, which is gradual. It's, it's a process. It's evolution. It's by choice and so forth as opposed to the absolute, being timeless and no progress and that, and that. But it takes kind of a sort of a courage and a maturation and a growth after you've had an exclusive realization of the absolute to, to still play the game with full zest, to also honor this and to honor your 
relative role in things when you know the absolute. It's been my path anyway, so. Because everything pales in comparison, right? So it's like, but still it fills up the majority of your consciousness. So then you can stop honoring the relative, but then, um, you know, doesn't necessarily get you anywhere, anywhere further or closer either. And even though this is so dense compared to that freedom, there is an appreciation available for the fact that this illusion has some kind of a, some kind of a purpose, intelligence behind it, that it is an expression of the absolute and to appreciate the relative timing of the entity. It's a weird game, very complex, paradoxical. It's very strange indeed. This whole thing is just so strange. <laughs>